What's up, y'all? Welcome back. We've all seen the Oklahoma Onion Burger by now, right? Where you take super thinly sliced onions and smash them straight into the patty? A couple years ago, it became not only one of the most viral burgers, but one of the most viral foods of the internet age. But what if I told you there was another, less celebrated, but equally deserving Sooner State specialty that you've probably never tried? Well, that's what we're doing today, the Oklahoma Caesar Burger. It's exactly what it sounds like, Caesar salad on a burger. It's big, sloppy, stupid, and fantastic. Let me show you how I do it. First step today is gonna be to make my Caesar dressing. So into my two cup measuring cup goes one egg. You can do just the yolk, but this still works and I hate separating eggs. The juice of one whole lemon, a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce, about two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, three anchovy fillets, one or two cloves of garlic. I'm just using one because this one's pretty big. And then a few tablespoons of microplaned Parmesan cheese. I don't know exactly how much I'm grating here, but you can get away with a pretty variable amount of it. So use as little or as much as you like. Most of that's gonna go in, but I'm gonna save a little bit of it for something later. And then lastly goes a whole bunch of black pepper. Again, I like a lot, but use however much you want. And then a restrained pinch of salt. There's lots of salty stuff in here already, so we don't wanna overdo it, and we can always add more later. So now, with the immersion stick, I'm gonna blend that until it's mostly smooth and the anchovies and the garlic are broken down, and then I'll start adding my oil. So with the blender on, I'll start adding a steady stream of neutral oil. This is just regular vegetable oil. And if we do our job right, eventually you'll notice that it's gonna start thickening up kind of like a mayonnaise. In fact, it'll thicken up like a mayonnaise because it is a mayonnaise. It's an emulsification of eggs and oil with a bunch of additional flavors in this case. You'll know you're on the right track if you start to see the oil pool on top of the dressing as you add it, kind of like that there. The more oil you add, the thicker it's gonna get, so I'm going to eventually add about a cup of vegetable oil in total, at which point it should be just a little bit looser than we want, but that's okay, because now we're gonna switch over to olive oil and add a few tablespoons of that. The emulsion is stable enough at this point where we can just pour in a little at a time and stir it in, which is great because the more extreme action of the stick blender can turn the olive oil bitter. So at this point, I'm just adding olive oil until I like the way it tastes, and that seems about right to me there. Just needs a little bit more pepper, and I'm gonna call that done. Caesar dressing is really interesting to me because there's so much going on that it doesn't really taste like any of its constituent parts but when you taste the final product, the flavor is totally unmistakable. It's like a magic potion that appears from the random detritus of your tiny cauldron. Okay, moving on here, the next thing I'm gonna do is prep my buns. I think everyone would agree that one of the best parts of any Caesar salad is the garlic croutons, so that's what I'm gonna try to emulate here. I'm gonna start by chopping up two cloves of garlic nice and fine, basically as fine as I can with a knife. I considered doing this part with the microplane, but mine's already in the sink, so knife it is. Just sharing that to give you an idea of how fine I'm thinking here. That's gonna go into a little saucepan along with a couple tablespoons of butter, and I'm gonna put that on medium-low heat. I wanna slowly coax as much flavor out of the garlic and into the butter as I can here. You'll see why in a minute. So low and slow it is. While that gets going, I've got some romaine here that I can prep. To me, romaine is the only choice for Caesar salad. And even though this is going on a burger, it's no exception. Not doing anything fancy here, just getting some of these giant leaves that I'll first cut in half lengthwise and then I'll mow those down into about one inch wide strips. I don't want a full shred here like you could with iceberg because romaine would turn to mush, but I want the pieces small enough to sit compactly on top of the burger and not fall out everywhere. So I'll get that washing and then turn my attention back to the garlic butter, which I can see is just barely starting to turn brown. So I'll turn that off and then I'm gonna strain out the garlic bits as I pour the butter into my cast iron skillet. I'm gonna toast my bun in this here garlic butter, but if I left the actual garlic bits in, they would just burn. Don't worry though, we're not gonna waste those, we're just not gonna use them right now. So now I'll get my bun toasting over medium heat. I'm using what was labeled as a hearty sandwich roll for this. Use whatever you want, but something sturdier than a potato bun is a good choice here, I think. That amount of toast looks good to me, so now I'm gonna take those out and turn my broiler on for the last step of the garlic croutonification. First, I'm gonna take that reserved garlic and spread it out over the two halves of my bun. 
and then I'm gonna cover that with this parmesan that I saved from earlier. The idea is that the parm will protect the garlic from burning and get nice and crispy as it melts. Will it work? We'll see. Keep a close eye on this because it won't take long for the transformation to be complete. I should have time to get my burger started though, right? Yeah, totally. Let's do that. I'm gonna make a big fat boy today, probably in the neighborhood of six to eight ounces. The Caesar is really bold, so I think a big burger will hold up better compared to a thin smash patty. Minimal handling is key here, just enough to get it to hold together and get it into shape. I like the little trick too of putting a divot in the middle so the whole thing evens out during the cooking. Now's a good time to check on my buns. And I burned it a little. Okay, maybe don't do other things while this is under the broiler. But you know what? It's not that bad, so I'm gonna roll with it. The cheese crisped up just like I wanted to, so I think this is still gonna be great. I'll just set that aside for now while I cook the burger. Thick burger or thin burger, I like to have everything else done before the patty itself. The burger is always best immediately off the grill or the pan, so it's best to have everything else ready before that happens. My pan is on medium-high heat, and I've wiped out all the butter from before. That would just burn if I left it in there, and I swear I am actually trying to not burn things here. Once that's in, I'll hit it aggressively with salt and pepper, and now to be honest, this is where I'm gonna show my ass a little bit. You see, cooking big hunks of red meat to perfect medium-rare doneness is not my forte. I don't have a ton of practice at it. I also don't really have the right spatula for this job. A sturdier metal guy would be better for this to really scrape up all that brown crust, but this is the best I got. So I lost a little crust and spoiler alert, this burger is going to be overdone to some people's standards. But with all that being said, if you use meat with a high enough fat content, this is 80-20, handle it gently and only apply salt to the exterior, don't mix it in. Your burger is gonna be tender, juicy, and delicious no matter how you cook it. Now's a good time to go ahead and mix the salad. The point here is to really drown it. Remember, you're applying enough sauce here, not just for the salad, but for the entire burger. If it wasn't abundantly clear yet, I hope you understand now that I'm not making a reasonable food today. I think this looks good, and honestly, it might still be on the modest side. If you look at pictures of this burger from Johnny's in Oklahoma City, their salad is like 60% dressing. So back to the burger here, you know how it goes. Flip it, realize you forgot to season that side, flip it back over, season it, flip it again. Just keep going until it looks good to you. I think this is where I'm gonna pull it, probably about three minutes too late, but whatever. It's time for assembly, and for this one, it's pretty straightforward. Burger goes down, and on top of that, as much salad as you can stack on there. And that's really it. After a couple thumbnail pictures, I'm gonna cut this in half to make it easier to eat. And I gotta say, this thing is actually really, really delicious. The homemade Caesar dressing is really great, super cheesy and savory. But for me, what really puts this thing over the top is that garlic crouton bun. Even though it's a little burnt, it's still doing exactly what I wanted and providing that nice textural contrast. This is way better than I ever thought it was gonna be, and I think you would enjoy it too. So I hope you give it a try sometime, and if you do, let me know in the comments how it goes. Thanks.